Yo, it's your boy Dragons of Thunder, and I'm back live and direct with another video. Look at that spider! I need to kill him. With another video. Last night I had a, a um house gecko inside of here, man. But uh, I should have recorded it for y'all. Today's video, we're talking about ISO Pod Care, and uh, I picked up some new dairy cows today. So I want to show you guys the care of uh, ISO Pods. Now, isopod care with uh, bearded dragons will be different than um, any other species like uh, geckos, snails, and things like that. So first off, I want to explain what my substrate is. I have a uh, place in from uh, a plant nursery. The place in that I like to use is very soft and very thin not rough gritty thick stuff from like home depot or lowe's the place in in the uh nursery plant nursery is way thinner than um anything you can get at a uh, home depot or lowe's so let me show y'all this sand real quick some of this sand is mixed with uh lowe's because i had no choice but you can see how grainy and fine it is the sand at Home Depot and Lowe's is like rocky, like all rocky, all the way. That that real good grain is uh, from the nursery. Look at that girl, knocked out. So, back to these isopods. Let's talk about these isopods. Today, I went to the North, uh, North America Reptile Breeder Conference, and I picked up some uh, dairy cows. So, I'm starting me a... Uh, a breeder bin this is a I think it's a sterilite um, uh, it don't say the quartz oh 5.7 liter 6 quart the shoe box quart so this is the smallest I recommend going for a breeder colony with uh, isopods and the reason I say that is because when you uh, start breeding these uh these isopods, these roly polies, they're gonna produce at a high rate. Anyway, dairy cow, powder oranges, and powder blues produce at a high rate. So, as you can see, I have uh, bee pollen, I have calcium sprinkled within, I have broken leaves, um, and I have full leaves. I also have moss, um, sphagnum moss, and uh, I have bark, like bark chippings with soil so my isopods are being kept in the garage and uh they'll do fine because even with the hot temperatures they'll still survive because of my humidity now that this is something i want to break down to you guys about uh bearded dragon uh bioactive tanks with with uh spring tails and isopods now a lot of people that tell you straight up, you can't do uh, spring tails, you can't do certain isopods with uh, with the bearded dragon species because of the heat. Now, um, if you know what you're doing and you can get good humidity and great airflow, um, you can actually be successful with isopods. That guy, he, that guy almost looked normal. He looks pretty good. I like him. But uh, you can tell females from males if you know what you're looking for. Up underneath, uh, they'll have a pit. The females will have a pit. I got some small ones in there too. There you go. Bam. But the uh, females will have a pit to carry the larvae and carry the eggs the eggs and then the larvae so these are my dairy cows these are my new uh my new guys that i got it should be that i that i bought it should be 24 inside of here i bought a 12 and 12 but i don't think it was 12 in the first one so i'm gonna put them to the side and now go navy Oh, shout out to my sister, man, early on. And shout out to Boss Dragons. Shout out Boss Dragons, Central NY. 
your boy Dragons of Thunder, and my girl Ohana. So, uh, Naga, Azula, and E Ray. We got Fang over there too. Fangy Fang. So, um, I want to show you guys and talk to you how you can get your isopods to survive inside of a my my high side is always a desert my high side is a desert theme i thought i seen that gecko I had to come back down here real quick um my high side is always always desert theme so the high side will always be desert theme I gotta clean that poop. She did that today. So, the hot side, like I say, I've said it a lot of times, is desert, and the cool side is a woodland area. So, in on the woodland side, this is the only side that I missed. I will miss the hot side sometime when I'm cleaning off the hides and stuff, but that's about it. You can see I have a lot, a lot, a lot of leaf litter. Um. Reason being, look at that beetle. Uh, let's see, there's a beetle right there somewhere. But uh, reason being is because they eat this. They eat it real good. But um, let's see if we can get a focus. You can see springtails and everything. So my springtails, they do real good, and my isopods. A lot of people say you cannot achieve that in a bearded dragon terrarium. But yes, you can. If you understand what you're doing, you can get it done. You just have to have great humidity and great airflow. So let's take a dive into this substrate. Literally, let's get in here. Um, so under here, I have an erase tank. I have uh, powdered blues and I have oranges. Um, my powder blues and my oranges, um, I'll probably leave alone for a bit. I've took, I've taken a lot out. Um, recently I've, um, shipped them all across America. Uh, let's see. Yeah, recently I've shipped them all, 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 all across America. There go my supers. Baby supers. Oh, man. I got some baby supers going, man. Praise God. That's a good thing. So, I have baby supers and I have mealworms in this substrate. Um, and honestly, man, that's 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 amazing to get uh, mealworms inside of here. I mean, supers. I had mealworms at a high rate and uh, I kind of got tired of them. So, I'm kind of glad those guys are like not super thick in here anymore. But all the way through my substrate, you will see isopods all the way from the back corner, all the way to the front. And even they go over there too. A lot of them go over there and chill out. You can see one crawling, probably eating that poop. But yeah, a lot of them, man, they, uh, they, uh, they do like to be dry sometimes. So you want to make sure you, you're not spraying the entire tank there got some springtails back there you want to make sure you're not spraying the whole entire tank because you do want dry spots um my girl zula has so many leaks oh my god that scared the hell out of me that's a dubia i gotta get that out of there so let me find these uh tongs because i don't touch dubia at all i'm putting this guy back in the breeder bin or uh, I'm talking about back in it, but I'm gonna put it in the breeder bin because it's it's a good size. It's a real good size. This this is a female too, so I'll put her back in. Well, not back in, but I'll put her in the breeder uh, the breeder uh, colony. Um, anyway. I'm gonna grab some of those leaves in the back over there and I'm gonna put them over here. Let me show y'all these uh, dairy cows that I have inside of uh, Azula's. Azula's tank have uh, has a dairy cow, um, dwarf whites, and uh, powdered blues and powdered oranges. 
I did I did have uh zebras. I did have zebras inside of uh E rays and Azula's tank, but they died off. Now they they are correct about certain species. I'm tired of those beetles. I gotta get those buffalo beetles out of here, man. I gotta figure it out. Um I might sift my whole substrate just to get those out of here. I don't like them no more. I mean, they actually decent in here. I don't mind them in here. But I'm going to get them out, out of my dubia colony. Uh, you can see some dairy cows right here. Oh, is my dairy cow dead? Oh, are they mating? Oh, we just caught them live action mating. So there got some dairy cows mating. Getting a boogie woogie on. Yes. So these dairy cows, they do mate a lot. And I like that. You can see them all through the bowl down here. Um, the dairy cows do mate and produce a lot. That's why I picked up more today. Um, I love the dairy cow. It, and um, also, it can live up to two years. And actually, your boy Rickadilus Reptilius, I think that's his name. He has one that's over two years old. And they say the max time is two years, which is bullcrap. Um, nobody really knows. There goes some baby dairy cows. Nobody really knows the um, lifespan, life expectancy of these dairy cows and these zebras and these powder blues. Like, nobody understands the full care. Ooh, look at all them dairy cows. I thought they were gone. Roach. Dairy cow, dairy cow, dairy cow, dairy cow. So, we got a lot of dairy cow in there. Spider was just on my hand from the water bowl. And it didn't scare me, but I don't like spiders at all. Um, So, we got a lot of dairy cows in here. They, they under the water bowl. I normally don't see that many, so I'm glad I, I'm doing this video. So, um, anyway, a lot of people, they say, once again, that these isopods can't survive in a bearded dragon terrarium, but I'm proving it wrong. Y'all know me, man. I like to prove things wrong. I like to try it myself, like the zero being bred to the uh, head zero. I still do want to get paperwork on it. And I want to get uh, scientists involved. The zoo, Fort Worth Zoo, is uh, still interested. The Grapevine uh, Exotic Hospital is still interested. So later down the line, I will get to that. But right now, that's not my focus. Is that a zebra? That was a zebra. I thought all my zebras died. So uh, what I was saying was, oh, a dubia. What I was saying was, I need to start coming out here at night and getting these doobie out of here. Cause I don't like them in my tanks. I'm gonna put that bad boy in the breeder bin. Uh, so my my breeder um, colony for my, uh, my breeder colony for my dubia is starting to boom again. Praise ye the Lord. Serious, not playing with God. Um, it's booming again, and I'm excited, excited about that. And so, um, here soon, I'll be able to feed my dubia from my colony again. Uh, a lot of y'all should know that I burnt my dubia colony up um, this summer. I left the heat on. Um, I left the heat. I left the heat on uh, too high, the portable heater. I think it just kicked on. I got a portable heater up there next to my tub, but um, I burnt my uh, dubia colony up. I killed like over half of them. Uh, I thank God I had like 3,000 feeders put up in here, and so that girl, she's probably gonna come out of there and go into my breeder colony. That big girl. So uh, yeah, I'm happy about that because honestly. Uh, I mean, I'm not happy that it burnt up. I'm happy that it's coming back. And I got to remove those buffalo beetles. But uh, I did. Oh, my God. Look at those wax worms. How big they get. That's crazy. But um, 
I don't even know what I was saying, man. I'm about to lift this water bowl up and show you guys uh, the isopods in Naga's tank. Let me get this roach out of here. Uh, let's see. Come here. Come here, girl. Gotcha. Put her back in the feeder bin. I'll probably feed her off. Because I don't really need any more females in my colony. But, uh... I love that. I love uh, Naga sand. Her sand is on point. But uh, I, I seen a zebra and I thought my zebras were dead. Let's see what we got here. Um, I thought my zebras were dead, dead. But I seen one. And honestly, I haven't seen zebra breeding with any other isopod or dairy cow breeding with any other isopod look at all these isopods man it's crazy uh i guess i i guess i have way more than what i thought because i thought i was getting low but as you can see man i have tons and tons of isopods it's, it's even some over there underneath the sand but uh naga's tank this tank i only put a I only put a very little isopods in here from E-Ray's tank. E-Ray's tank built um, Naga's tank up with isopods and Azula's. Azula had the dairy cows to begin with. I took some of the dairy cows and put them over here. So E-Ray's don't have any dairy cows, but Naga and, uh, Naga and Azula's does. Azula has the main hub of dairy cows that I bought. So they ended up in Azula's tank. And the zebras were in um the zebras were in uh the zebras were in the uh, e ray's tank, but they died. You really have to water those and uh make sure they don't get too hot. If my uh if my bins, if my uh terrariums were indoors my zebras would have survived but my uh my tanks are outside so that's just what that is i'm not mad about it or anything i got carrots in this uh soil substrate but i man i love i love these isopods man like when um look at that that dairy cow that's a beautiful one right there but yeah, when I started getting isopods, man, I, I didn't think too much of it in the beginning. I didn't really care about them or nothing like that. And uh, the springtails also. But I started uh, studying, reading. Oh, you also want to always... I, I take some... Uh, this is um, cuddle bone. I had it in Nagas Azula's tank at first. Um... I had a whole piece in there, but now what I do is I'll break pieces up and I'll spread it throughout the tank every blue moon. Like I won't put the whole cuddle bone in there. You know what I'm saying? It's a mineral, it's a mineral uh calcium thing for birds. You can go buy it at the pet store. It's a cuddle bone. But I'll do this and uh with all my isopods in my bioactive tanks. I'll put that in there, and then sometime, sometime I do, I will sprinkle calcium directly inside of my tank. You know what I mean? So, so sometime I'll put calcium inside. I'll put a, I'll put a multivitamin in there sometime for my isopods. I take care of them just like I take care of uh, my dragons. Then uh, I'll put the crested gecko diet in there. And right now, um, I'm actually, oh, I'll put the bee pollen in there too. So I got some of my more, some of my leaves that I had, uh, sanitized on deck. I didn't use all of them, man. That's, uh, my bark, wood bark. I need to clean up, man, guys. Y'all know it's the story of my life. Um, my wood that's going in my tanks for fang and ang. Uh, so here go my last look at my new ones. These are my new uh, dairy cows. I'm in love. Here shortly, I'm gonna break this down. I, I'm a, in about a month or two.
probably a month because within three within a couple of weeks or three weeks these these uh dairy cows will be uh producing like straight up they'll have babies larvae they'll be uh isopods so within three weeks or a month i'll divide this in half make some more substrate and start with the uh i'll do a bigger bin like that so i'll do a bin this size which is i don't know i took the sticker off of it so i'll break it up i'll take half of them and then put more substrate in that bin with some sphagnum moss leaves uh tree bark um crushed up leaves sand and soil so yeah man i'll divide this in a few weeks man three weeks or a month maybe two months let them let them bang 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 you know so uh once i divide them then i'll take the big bucket and i'll start breaking them down i won't even need to put them inside of my tanks no more um i will no longer need to put isopods inside of my tanks anymore because these isopods that's already in my tanks are producing at a high rate so powder blues powder blues powder oranges uh dwarf whites dairy cows and springtails is what i have and uh those all of those species that oh giant cannon uh giant cannon uh isopods i think um i do want to get into those but for the most part i will be just selling those the giant canyon uh isopods are great look all these man they everywhere man like real talk I, I will never have to add isopods to any of my tanks because they they produce and they doing what they supposed to do like straight up there's a lot of dwarf whites in here too um the dwarf whites are hard to see like for real for real but yeah man i will never have to buy or breed and put isopods in my tanks because my isopods are breeding at a high rate and everything's going good so um you get you some isopods and get you a, a bioactive and um honestly even my small uh tank this is ang even my small tank uh has isopods and buffalo beetles in it i don't know where they at they probably these guys probably are there let's see this water bowl uh, dubia supers the isopods are probably under this towel but they are definitely in here that's a fact i put a little bit in here i leave dubias inside the bins with the with the babies for the simple fact if they do breed in these bins i'll be able to get them out and once i transfer over um once i transfer over this substrate i'll see any of them in the substrate you know so they got dubia isopod spring tails and stuff like that in here uh yeah so um anyway i'm about to end this um like i say i will never have to ever buy isopods to put inside of my uh tanks i just won't have to because they produce at a high rate um about to cut my fans on let's see let's get loud but oh well let's see i like to put it on medium for the big blower and then this one that go on the babies I need to wipe it down. I put that one on high for Fang. It points right down at Fang, and then that one points at Aang. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's loud, and I'm going to get out of here. But um, I enjoy showing you guys this stuff. Please drop in the comments. Um, drop in the comments, Isopod Whisperer, if you did watch all of this video. Let me know that you support me and let me know that I need to keep making these videos.
Uh, yep. I'm just ready to blow up and get big because honestly, um, I don't mind putting out videos, but sometimes you lose motivation. Come and take it. Sometimes you lose motivation to just keep going and going for, uh, I'm not going to say nothing to keep going for, I don't know, sometimes it do feel like nothing, but it's, it's not nothing. You know what I mean? It is something. But yeah, just let me know, man. You support your boy, Springfield Armory. Smith and Western. You know what I'm saying? I think this is uh, coming back next month. But anyway, man. Isopod Whisperer. Isopod Whisperer in the uh, comments. Thrash like, pound, and subscribe. It's your boy Dragons of Thunder. And I am Audi 5000. About to get some uh, super worms out of here for uh, Yuzu. Holla at your boy, man. Guang